Welcome to my lecture online. In the previous two videos, we saw how we could use either cylindrical or spherical coordinates to find the volume of a, an eighth of a sphere with radius r. But in this video, we're going to show you how to do it with Cartesian coordinates. And it's a lot harder to do that. Matter of fact, the integration, one of the integrals is very tough to do and I had to go look it up in an integral book and then I have to go back and say, okay, how do you actually do that? Well, on the next video, we'll show you that particular portion in more detail. But let's go to the process of how we would find the volume of a spherical shaped object using Cartesian coordinate systems. So in, in that respect, the volume element dv is simply dx dy dz. We simply still have the equation of a sphere, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared. And if we solve this equation for x, we get x equal to the square root of r squared minus z squared minus y squared. And if we combine the r squared minus z squared, and we set that equal to a squared, because in one of the integrals, we're going to let z be a constant, then we can simply replace that by a squared to make things a little bit easier. So now we're going to try to find the volume and that's going to be the triple integral over your dv, which is dx dy dz. And we're first going to integrate over dx. So the integral of dx is simply x, and the limits of integration is from 0 to what x is equal to. And when you go up, x equals that quantity right there. Of course, we're going to simplify it by simply writing it as the square root of a square minus y square, where a square is r square minus z square. We can do that because in the next integral, when we integrate over dy, z will remain a constant. So when we plug in the upper limit, we get that. We plug in the lower limit, we get zero. So there's our next integral. Now we're going to integrate over y, and now the limits of integration are from zero to r squared minus z squared, because now we're integrating in a plane rather than over a volume. Now, what is this integral? Well, that's the hard part. The integral of this is equal to this. And so that's not something you typically will remember. And you'd, be, you'd have a hard time figuring out how to do that. So we're going to make that a very a separate video next on how to find this particular integral. But just take my word for it for now. That is the result of that integration. And since the limits are from 0 to the square root of r squared minus z squared, we can then go ahead and plug that in. Mm, I probably have some room down here. So v is equal to, and of course I can't forget my integral sign, the integral of dz times, when we plug in for y this quantity right here, we get the square root of r squared minus z squared times the square root of a squared. Now a squared was r squared minus z squared, so we can write that down, r squared minus z squared minus y squared. So minus this quantity squared, that would be minus r squared, and minus times the minus would be plus z squared, like this. And the whole thing divided by 2. Then plus a squared over 2, well, a squared is r squared minus z squared, so we get r squared minus z squared divided by 2, times the inverse sine of y over a. Now y, uh, where are we? Uh, y, well, we plug this in here, so we have the square root of r squared minus z squared, and a will be the square root of r squared minus z squared. Okay, I think we have everything and now we close the bracket. All right, that looks pretty scary, but actually it's not so bad because notice here we have r squared minus r squared and minus z squared plus z squared, so this whole thing goes to zero and zero times this is zero, so this whole first term disappears, which is nice. So let's come up here. So that means that we have v is equal to the integral of dz, and of course the last integral is going to go from 0 to r. And uh, so we have 0 plus, we have r squared minus z squared divided by 2 times the inverse sine of, well, that's equal to 1. And the inverse sine of equal to 1, that's pi over 2. That's uh, 90 degrees, so pi over 2. So we multiply this times pi over 2. Okay, so now what we end up here is with two integrals. Well, we, we can take the 2 out and the 2 here and the pi. 
So V is equal to uh, pi over 4 times the integral from 0 to R of R squared minus Z squared um, DZ from 0 to R. And now that becomes an easy integral to integrate. So V is equal to pi over 4 times R squared Z minus Z cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to R. Plugging in the lower limit, we get nothing. Plugging in uh, the upper limit, we get V is equal to pi over 4 times R squared times R gives me R cubed minus Z cubed becomes R cubed over 3, like this. And then if we multiply this by 3 and divide by 3, like so, we can then see that 3 minus 1 is 2 or 2 thirds, so V equals pi over 4 times 2 thirds r cubed and the 2 and the 4 cancel out so you end up with uh, that's equal to um, pi over 2 times 3 which is 6 times r cubed and sure enough that's the same answer we got before since we're only finding 1 8 of the volume of the sphere because we're only taking one little corner so we have v is equal to 1 8 times 4 thirds pi r cubed and notice that if we multiply 4 thirds times 1 8 we get 2 6 uh, 1 6 I'm sorry 1 6 pi r cubed so that means that this does indeed check that it's 1 8 the volume of a complete sphere and we found the right equation so of the three methods definitely spherical method uh, the spherical coordinates is the easiest cylindrical coordinates isn't bad but rectangular coordinates that is tough because we end up with this very, very difficult integral. And on the next video, we'll show you how to go ahead using trick substitution. We can actually figure out how to do that. But it would not be the recommended method. If they give you a choice, you wouldn't want to use this method. But what we did show, however, that it can be done with all three coordinate systems. You can find the volume of sphere with cylindrical, spherical, as well as rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system. It can be done. But this, in this case, that's not the, the least desirable. It would be the least desirable method, at least in my opinion. That is how it's done.